Welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time. Have a seat. Wow, so this is a first meet for us. Yeah, and it's great to meet you. Yeah, I'm really excited to just chat about this important topic for our generation and future generations for our nation. And so the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, that's who you work for, right, full time? Yeah, I'm the Ontario director. Oh, wow. And so what motivated you to sort of get involved with addressing this, this issue? So my background is I'm a lawyer. I practiced uh, commercial litigation for a few years in Toronto, and I really am interested in finances. I'm interested in politics as well, and my whole life I've been a fiscal conservative. I'm really diligent about my own finances, and when I see how the government is spending our money, it's our taxpayer money after all, uh, I was really passionate about the work that the Federation was doing. So we're a, a huge nonprofit organization with members across Canada, and our focus is on advocating for lower taxes, less government waste, and greater government accountability. Wow, amazing. And so how do you feel about where we're at right now? I know your focus is more provincially, but you know we're, we're talking to people from all across Canada today here through this broadcast. What's your read on things? Yeah, so I feel like in the past few years, politics has shifted a little bit. Politicians seem to no longer care about balancing the budget. And for people who run their household at home, you don't really have a choice but to balance your household budget. You can't live your life continuing to incur debt. But when we have fiscal discipline in our own lives, we're starting to see governments that are not doing that with our money. Mm -hmm. So federally, this year, the, the federal government has an $18.1 billion deficit. They have more than doubled the debt that they were gonna put onto Canadians since their election promise. They promised three years of small, what they called small deficits of just $10 billion. Debt, right? Yeah, <laughs> about in, the last uh, in the first year, they tripled what their estimate it was it yeah. was a t over 28 billion dollar deficit and we see the same thing in provinces across the country especially oh. in my home province of Ontario hmm. Wow. And so what's the real trickle down effect? Because sometimes, you know, in these conversations, it can feel like a bit of a disconnect for the average Canadian, right? Like we're just going through our day to day life and picking our kids up from school, that type of thing. But how does this all impact the average Canadian sort of at the end of the line? Well, what I like to say is that the deficits of today are the taxes of tomorrow. Mm. And they may not be you or I who are paying them. Although in the last mm. provincial government that was just announced, we saw there is going to be an income tax increase for people earning over $79,000. So, um, or sorry, $71,000. So there is gonna be an income tax increase. And if the federal government is sort of modeling the Ontario win approach of deficits don't matter, adding debt doesn't matter, uh, we're gonna see taxes increase at the federal level to pay for this dramatic increase in spending. Wow. Well, and when you add everything in right now, okay, so you add in your income tax, you add in, you know, everything that's being taken off the top on the paycheck, you add in what you're paying at the till with GST, HST, what is the average Canadian right now paying in taxes for their income? Uh, well, there are different measures for that. So some people say on average, the average Canadian is paying more than 70% of their income towards taxes and fees. These are all just different kind of measures. I prefer to rely on what the marginal tax rates are. So in Ontario, the top marginal rate, which is your combined federal and provincial rate, uh, the, the top one in, in Canada is 53.53% in Ontario. That means you're spending more than half your year working for the government instead of for yourself and for oh your family. Gosh, say that, say that again. It's 53.53%, so you're spending more than half the year working for the government instead of for yourself and for your family. Wow, and is that the highest in the world? Are we one of the highest tax brackets in the world over, overall? I'm not sure in the in the world, but we're certainly we Sorry should to put you on the spot. We should, there, we should compare ourselves to our largest trading partners. Mm -hmm. So in the United States, you don't see tax brackets like that. In fact, you see tax reductions with the current administration. And when you have a lot of flexibility and movement for businesses and capital, you can choose to move out of a high tax jurisdiction like Ontario uh, or, or different parts of Canada like Quebec and uh, move your business to places like the United States where the tax burdens are lower. Mm -hmm. and 
Wow. One thing that I've also realized in this conversation is it's a lot about optics, right? A lot of the decisions that are made in terms of the budget, the deficit, uh, it's about optics. And I was shocked when we went to do our taxes this year. I have two little ones, and so we get a paycheck every month, you know, the Canadian uh, child benefit. And it's a nice chunk of money because we've got two little ones. But our accountant actually told us that we will actually be paying more in taxes overall this year. And we're under that 71, okay? Uh, so, but we'll be paying more in taxes. Is that, is that going to be typical for most Canadians right now with the changes in the tax structures? It all depends on which income bracket you're in. So with the current Ontario changes, there are going to be some people who see, there are about 680,000 people who will see a small amount of tax relief as a result of, of income tax changes in the most recent budget. Um, but the change, the reduction is, about, is, is less than $200. <laughs> and um, when you see the other kinds of taxes that are increased, uh, taxes at the pump, so right now gas taxes are incredibly high. Um, they make up over 30% of what you pay at the, when you fill, fuel up your car to drive to work wow. or drive your kids around. Wow. And that is on to, that, that's on top of the, the cost of fuel. So wow. when you're filling up your car, really you should think about how much of you're paying in, in tax. Wow. And, and politicians are always adding to these kind of hidden taxes. Wow. So the, the cap and trade carbon tax in Canada or in Ontario, the way it works is you actually pay HST on top of the carbon tax when you <laughs> when you pay your what? home heating bill. You're taxed on a tax. That's yeah, exactly. Crazy. Wow. Well, it's so important for us to keep our pulse on this, which is why we so appreciate your organization. And there's another organization that we also want to pay attention to, and that's the House of Commons, right? The Parliament of Canada. And so right now, we've actually pulled a couple clips from recent discussions in the House of Commons about this whole issue. I want to throw to those clips, and then we'll be right back with Christine to talk more about this important issue for our nation. So just watch this.